Let's create a surrealism inspired composition. For this project, my specs will be 11 by 17 inches, 300 PPI, and the RGB color mode. I will import all four of my images at once by selecting them from my desktop and dragging them onto my canvas. Press enter for each image until they all appear. I'm not a big fan of the contextual taskbar, so I'm going to hide that by going to my window dropdown. Now I will hide all of my layers except for the sunset layer. Command T to scale it up to fill the entire canvas. Press enter to confirm the transformation. Now I will unhide my table layer. I need to remove the background, so I will do that with my object selection tool. In hovering over the table, I see that I forgot to select my table layer, so I will do that now. Now I see the correct pink outline. I'll click inside that pink outline and go to Select and Mask to check on how accurate my selection is. It looks good, but I know I can make the selection a little tighter by pulling down the Shift Edge slider. It's subtle. I'll click OK and then click on Layer Mask. Let's move the table down to the bottom edge of the canvas. Unhide the Typewriter layer. The background of this image is already transparent, saving us some time. I don't want the top part of the paper, so I will make a rectangle selection here and delete it with my keyboard delete key. I got this message, which means that I need to rasterize my layer to delete part of my image in this manner. So I will right click on my typewriter layer and go to rasterize layer. Now the delete key should work. After dragging my leafy green to the top, I'll use the object selection tool to remove its background. I like to check on my selections with Select and Mask. It's a good selection, but I will tighten it up a bit by dragging down the Shift Edge slider and then using the Brush tool. I can check on my brush settings here, and I want to be sure I have the Subtract from Selection icon selected. I'll remove this little piece at the top and then zoom in to demonstrate how we can smooth out the edges if so desired. It could use some more refining, but I'll move on. Now for the layer mask, just like I did with the table layer. Command T to scale down and rotate the leaf. Then I will hide the leaf layer because I want to work with the typewriter. There are so many ways to make selections in Photoshop. When we need to make a precise angular selection, the polygonal lasso tool can be a really good option. I'm going to click and move my cursor around the roller bar like so. Every time I click, it allows us to change direction. When you get back to the beginning, you can close the selection by clicking exactly at the start point, or double click when you're almost there and it will close for you. Now make sure that the typewriter layer is actually selected, mine was not at first, and then let's create a new layer with just this roller bar selection using Command J. I'll name my layer and hide the typewriter just to check that it worked. Let's unhide the leafy green layer and drag the layer below the roller bar. Now the magic is beginning to show. Did you think we were done making selections? Nope. Let's make one more. We will trace around the typewriter cover plate using the quick selection tool. This works great when there is a distinct enough difference between the pixels we are working with. Before recording this video, I tried this tool with the roller bar and it did not like it one bit. Click and drag over the cover plate. The selection needs some work, but this is a great start. Photoshop selected extra areas, so let's remove those now. Make sure the subtract from selection icon is selected and click and drag over the areas we want to remove. No worries if you remove too much, you can add it back in easily enough. I'll command J to duplicate the cover plate onto its own layer. It needs just a bit of refining, so we can do that with the eraser tool. I'll drag my eraser around a few areas and good enough. Let's unhide our leafy green and adjust the color just a little bit. Our sunset colors are warm, so the leaf would look more natural if we warmed it up. Go to the image drop down and adjustments and color balance. I'll move the slider in the red direction to make our green appear warmer. Now I will command J to duplicate my leaf layer two times and command T to rotate and scale each one a little differently. 
you can ignore the smart filter warning. I'll group my leafy greens just to get a little organized in my layers panel. Then adjust the color of the table as well. I'll adjust the red and magenta sliders until I find a purple hue that appears to match the sky. Let's finish up by adding some drop shadows. We can make the typewriter on the table look more natural by adding a drop shadow. Double click on the table layer. Be sure to click to the right of the layer name. Then select the drop shadow tab at the bottom. This circle here represents the angle of the light source. I'll leave it at this angle with the thinking that the sun is directly behind my typewriter. Watch how the drop shadow changes as you experiment with the opacity, distance, spread, and size sliders. It's really quite fun. With the sun low in the sky, it makes sense to crank up the distance slider. Let's also add a drop shadow to the roller bar to make that look more realistic. In this case, the distance needs to be less with the thinking that the roller bar is touching the leafy greens. I almost forgot to drag my leafy greens underneath the cover plate. Sometimes we need to add shadows that the drop shadow feature cannot help us with. So, using the shape tool, I will create a rectangle in the area that we'd expect to be darker with shadows. Then, using the gradient tool, I will select this basic gradient swatch. If you don't see it, it should be located under the basics folder. I see that I have a thin stroke, so I can get rid of that here in the properties panel. Then, if you click on the fill, notice how you can customize the gradient by moving these sliders around. Now we've got ourselves a surrealist composition and notice that we achieved a nice color harmony with the use of a triadic color scheme, purple, orange, and green.